Okay, so last class we talked about calorimetry, both direct calorimetry and indirect calorimetry, and, and how different macronutrients, uh, though we often say there's a certain number of kilocalories per gram, can be altered a little bit. And we also talked about metabolic rate, and that's where I want to start today, because there are other factors that will affect metabolic rate. Uh, we talk about resting metabolic rate and basal metabolic rate. And now if you look at this slide here, um, what we're seeing here is what we would just call total energy expenditure, or TE. In other words, what is the total energy you would utilize in a day? And as you can see, the vast majority of this, about 70%, is resting metabolic rate. This is the energy you use to, to sleep, to sit, things that don't require much effort above rest. However, there is a little bit more to this, and one of the things we can see here is there is a small part that we call the thermic effect of food, and this is simply energy required to digest and then absorb nutrients you eat. Now, we're going to get more into digestion and absorption of various macronutrients in class, but it does require some energy, some ATP, in order to do this. It's about 10%. So, actually, about 10% of the energy you're using is to break down the food you're eating to use for energy, basically. And then there's another part here that we'll just throw in the category of physical activity. Now, clearly this can be different depending on the person. We generally say that this is in the ballpark of 10-20%, again, depending on the individual, uh, depending on how active they are in a day. And as you can see, there are a lot of factors that affect this some of which are largely not under our control, like gender and age, unfortunately, and some of these which are very much under our control, like exercise, has a large role on total energy expenditure. Uh, there are some substances like caffeine has a role in increasing slightly metabolic rate. There are numerous medications, other things that can have some small effect on metabolic rate. Um, there, this is just a very, very short list. We could go into other hormones, not just thyroid hormone, but other ones that can, at least in a small part, have a role in affecting metabolic rate. And so understanding there are some of these factors here. And so this is, again, just sort of a, a brief picture of what we just talked about. This idea of the thermic effect of food, that not only is there total energy expenditure, but there is components of this, one of which being the energy it takes to digest and absorb the food that we take in. Okay. So this kind of gets us to this next part of actually measuring energy expenditure, because ultimately we want to do that. Ultimately we want to know, hey, how many calories in a day do I use? And if I know that number, I can then know, okay, well, I use as many calories, so I should take in this many calories. Well, obviously, that's not easy to measure, as we've talked about before. Um, measuring calories in a food stuff using a bomb calorimeter is doable, but how you measure, uh, measure what you expend is very difficult. Uh, so I want to just talk about a few measures, and then I'm going to give you a couple ways we can estimate this uh, and I'll go through some of that calculation. So generally remember what we talked about before that we can measure energy expenditure uh, and it has a role in calories used. So when we define a calorie, the actual definition of a calorie is simply the heat required to raise the temperature of one gram of water one degree Celsius. Now again, this is difficult to measure in humans. Uh, there are varying different things that affect our body temperature. Energy expenditure is one, but it's certainly not the only one. And so, though this is valuable from a mathematical point of view, and even a physics point of view, it's a little bit difficult in practice to measure. Um, but I wanted to start here because there's one key thing I want us to see here, is that we typically, in, in nutrition, when we use the word calorie, this actually, this definition right here is not what we're talking about. We typically, when we use the word calorie, we're talking about kilocalories. So you often see, I'll do this in class, uh, when I say something is 100 calories, I'll often abbreviate calories, K-C-A-L, because that's kilocalories. So on a nutrition, nutrition label, 
if it if it says your candy bar has 250 calories it's really 250 kilocalories so just understanding there's a difference there and that's key because when we measure this and we are going to estimate here in a second energy expenditure we are going to get a value in kilocalories per day okay so what's a way to do that this is one equation and it's actually one of the more reliable ones so this is the one i'm going to ask you to be familiar with uh, it's called the mifflin equation which basically takes in three factors which are largely associated though not directly with metabolic rate and those are going to be your weight your height your age and fourthly a gender although that is a different equation and so the way this equation will work is you will need to know a person's weight in kilograms you'll need to know their height in centimeters their age which should be pretty simple and if you know that and you know know their gender you can estimate their resting metabolic rate in kilocalories per day. So let's use an example here, and we'll just use the one on the slide because that's fairly simple. Um, understand, on an exam, I'm not going to ask you to memorize this equation. Uh, this is an equation I would give you. However, on the side here, these equations for converting pounds to kilograms, and inches to centimeters, you have to know that. I'm not going to give you that on an exam. That's something you're in college, you should know that. Uh, so make sure you're aware of how to do that. And we're going to do that here. So let's, we have an example here. We have someone, female, five, six hundred thirty-five pounds. Okay. Well, first thing we want to do is convert these to metric. Uh, we have our age, 23. That's easy. Five, six, that's five foot six inches. That would be 66 inches total. And we need to convert 66 inches into centimeters. 66 times 2.54, that's going to give us 165 centimeters. So we've converted that. Weight, her weight is 135 pounds. To convert that to kilograms, we are going to get here. You can divide it by 2.2 or you can multiply it by 0.45. You'll get the same number. Here it's 61.36 kilograms. At this point, if we have the weight in kilograms and we have the height in centimeters and we have the age, we can estimate resting metabolic rate. And at this point, it's just algebra. If you come down here, you can see how they go step by step through this equation. I'm not necessarily going to go step by step through that. I think we all are pretty familiar with how to do uh, sign calculus algebra there. And you'll see a, a, a number here of 1370, 1,370 kilocalories. Now, again, this is an estimation. It's not a perfect value. There are other factors that affect the resting metabolic rate. But at least gives us a place to start to get a grasp of, okay, well, if this is someone's resting metabolic rate, now we can start to get to how much should they eat a day? How many kilocalories per day should they take in? So the Mifflin equation is a very, very common one. I've put another one in your slides, the Cunningham equation, which is a little less accurate. Uh, and you have to know fat-free mass, which is a little more difficult. Um, but it is there for you as well. And this really leads to this last thing I want to go to today, of beginning to move to not just energy expenditure, but then ultimately, how much food do I take in? And so this is from your book, and we're going to refer back to this later on in the semester when you do your nutrition analysis, because this gives us a, a estimate of, based on gender and based on activity level, how many kilocalories a day per kilogram of body weight someone utilizes. And so let's just work a, a, an example out here. Let's say you have someone, a male, okay? And this male is moderately active. They exercise three, four days a week. Um, and they weigh, I'm just going to throw out a number, 70 kilograms. Okay, 70 is a pretty easy number to use. So they would fall into this box right here, male, moderately active. They are 70 kilograms. So if I want to know how many kilocalories per kilogram per day, I would multiply 70 times 41, which is roughly, roughly 2,800. It's actually 2,807, but that's okay. That gives us an estimate of the number of kilocalories per day this person is expending. Now, again, there are factors that affect this, but we're going to use this chart when we do our nutrition analysis in order to estimate 
what someone's caloric intake should be because the idea is caloric intake should closely match caloric output in normal situations. So this is a good place to start. Uh, we're going to take this later on, so we'll revisit this later. Uh, we're next on class going to go talk about carbohydrates. So uh, see you in class.